Good Friday afternoon to you from Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. Hope you're having a great Friday. Hope you had a good Columbus Day holiday. And that the autumn colors are popping out for you wherever you are. Today we have from 2004 and the Warnick Company of McAllen, Texas. Menu number 23, chicken with cavatelli. Also included in this menu are fig bar, pound cake, cheese spread with bacon. Oh, bacon. Yeah, just about anything with bacon will work pretty good. Wheat snack bread, beverage base, hot sauce. And that's probably going to be a little bottle of Tabasco. Accessory packet A, a spoon, and a flameless ration heater. Accessory packet A supposedly contains coffee, sugar, creamer, salt, chewing gum, matches, toilet tissue, and hand cleaner. Today's special guest star knife is going to be from the Case Company. And it's a trapper model. A trapper as opposed to the cattleman which has three blades. Trappers have two. We have a clip point and a spay blade. So, we're going to use our special guest peelable seal opener to get started. Just like that. And it's open. Now, I've seen people before say, how should you close a folding pocket knife? I like to do it this way, with my hand on top of the blade on the spine, fingers well away from where the blade's going to wind up, and carefully close it. Whatever way works for you, that's the way you ought to do it. But for me, this way. That way I didn't cut myself. And here we have a branded leather case pouch made especially for this size knife. Case is not a sponsor of this video. I got this knife as a premium for being a life member of a Second Amendment rights organization. And I bought the pouch separate, oiled it up, and it's one of my favorite knives to carry. All right. Let's see what's in here. Pull it out. And right on top we have a fig bar. This actually feels like maybe two fig bars. Let's see if we can determine. Oh, look at that. There it is. Packing date of 275th day of 2004. All right. And here we have pound cake. I'm not going to squeeze that too hard because now I figured out what it is and I don't want it to be mushy. And that was packed 240th day of 2004. Accessory packet A. Prediction was correct uh, regarding the Tabasco sauce. It's still liquid. I don't know if you can see it in there. And matches, chewing gum, taster's choice instant coffee, non-dairy creamer, gum, toilet tissue, uh, sugar, and a salt packet are all inside. Good old brown MRE spoon. We're going to set that to the side and use it for something else on a camping trip or somewhere. Next up we have... This is probably the bacon and cheese spread. Oh, yes it is. Cheese spread with bacon. It's nice and uh, firm, so we're going to have to knead it quite a bit before we use it, just to make sure that it'll come out when we need it to. And the packing date on that appears to be 292nd day of 2004. You might be able to read it, maybe not. Cheese spread with bacon. We'll have some of that. Beverage base powder, orange. Feels powdery, which is the first test it needs to 
pass. And we have a packing date on that of 286th day of 2004. It feels like it's probably okay. We'll see more when we uh, get it out. And this probably the wheat snack bread. Feels like one piece. Sometimes they put two of them in a pack and in, in a menu, in a retort pouch. Two pieces. This is one. And this is from the 285th day of 2004. Here we have the world famous FRH. Cutting chore number two for our case knife today. We'll be cutting this envelope open. And here we have the main entree, breaded chicken breast patty with pasta shells and tomato sauce. That, I guess, is what they call chicken with cavatelli. A breaded chicken breast patty with pasta shells. That would be the cavatelli, probably. And tomato sauce. Now, we're going to try the FRH today. But as usual, we have a pot of boiling water standing by. And if the FRH doesn't do the job, then we'll call upon the pot of boiling water to finish it up. And on the back of here we have the standard instructions about putting it on a rock or something. And we just happen to have something off camera that will work for that. So let's get this stuff out and see how it came through. And let's get this pouch into the FRH to start the show. So without much further gabbing and vamping by me, I'll pull it out of there. You can see that it appears to have been vacuum packed. It's all wrinkly. I'm going to give it a smell test. I don't smell anything. And the outer wrapper appears to be intact. I don't see any separation there. So what I'm going to do is get this started cooking. Um, we'll find the FRH. Get our official guest star case knife open. Doesn't really matter which blade we use, but let's use the spade blade for this one. So we'll fold this over. Yeah, it's just that simple. Didn't cut it evenly, don't really care about that. Now I'm going to open it up. and get the heating unit sticking out a little bit. I'm going to put this food side down on the heating unit. Kind of tamp those down inside of there like so. I usually try to center the heating unit in the middle of the main body of the uh, retort pouch so that we get more heating where the food is rather than down towards the edges. Now a little bit of water in there. Just happen to have some. About an ounce of this will work. It's right at the do not overfill line. So we'll fold the top over best we can. Shake it up a little bit. Wait and see if we feel any heat. Oh, it's heating up. I feel it. All right. I can smell the gas escaping from that. And we're going to put this over on our rock or something just off camera. Let's return to the beverage powder. Let's we'll see how this fared. Again, we'll use the oh, little puff of dust came out of there. Use the case knife to get that out. That's good enough to get it out of there. Okay, here we go. We're going to pour it in the cup. Nice and powdery. No lumps. No off color. 
looks slightly orange. So here we have some purified water and we'll pour it in and that's about 12 ounces. Pretty grainy and gritty in there as the spoon starts to circulate it. And now it's starting to be less so. No crackers in this, uh, this edition. So we're supposed to put the cheese spread on the snack bread. Let's take a look at the fig bar. Now what I suspect this is, is probably a couple of fig newtons. And across the other side. And look inside of there, they're not double packed, so here they come. There's one fresh out of the package. Been mushed a little bit. There's the other one, and it's been mushed a little bit. Give it a smell test. It smells fine. No mold or anything uh, really yucky appearing on it. It's just got, they both got smashed in about the same place. Let's open up the pound cake next. My experience with the pound cakes has been varied. Um, this one is a pineapple pound cake. And if it had a shelf-stable oxygen-absorbing strip in it, we may be in luck as far as spoilage goes. Otherwise, it could be a little rancid. Let's keep our fingers crossed, okay? Aha! Oxygen absorber. That's a good sign for that pound cake. Let's give it a smell. I can smell the pineapple right off. Don't smell anything off-putting about that whatsoever. So things are looking good for the pound cake. Now back to the cheese spread. Gonna stop the tape for a little bit while I go through some machinations with this and get it ready to put on the bread. So we'll be back in just a minute. I'm not planning to use anything in the accessory packet today, so I'm going to leave it zipped up. So set that aside. Okay, so the cheese is kneaded pretty well. Let's get the snack bread open. Once again, we let Mr. Case do his work. Snack bread is intact. It also had an oxygen absorbing packet, so I expect it to be in good condition and not spoiled. Sniff test, it smells good. There's a slight, slight, slight fruity smell to it. And it could be the smell of uh, malt, which I believe comes from barley actually, but anyway. It does not smell rancid or off-putting in any way. As is my habit, I'm going to make a little nozzle on here to squeeze out the cheese spread. Right there. And here it comes. And it's, as usual, it's looking a little brownish-orange. That's not anywhere out of what's normal for these things after that much time in the package. A little bit fill that corner in. Okay, what do you think? Stomach upset? Diarrhea? Or no problem? Alright, let's smell it. Actually I can smell the snack bread more strongly than the cheese. 
but I do smell the cheese and I do smell slight, slight, slight bacon y smell in there. So let's have a bite. Now the bacon flavor is really coming out. The cheese spread with bacon adds a so much needed dimension to the flavor and texture of this. I would say that the wheat snack bread is less thirst provoking than the MRE crackers are, but you want to have something standing by to drink if you can. However, you put the cheese spread on there, it's a different story. It's not quite as dry and therefore not quite as thirst provoking. Mm. Yes, sir. All right. For my friend Polly in the UK, a cheese buddy. How you like that, Polly? Did pretty good that time, huh? Got a bite of that. Mmm. Now that is good. So from 2004, um, at this time of the year, this being October 12th, we're looking at something that's been in storage for 14 years. Now these were new, less than a year old when I bought them. So I bought them early in 2005 and they've been stored under controlled conditions in my house ever since. Um, average temperature around 72 degrees, sometimes a little cooler. And they've been in the freezer for several months now. I took this one out about a week and a half ago and it's been at room temperature ever since. So I have to give it a passing grade, I really do. That is excellent. The orange drink is tangy, sweet, dissolve fully in that amount of water, tastes great. Like Kool-Aid or any other powdered drink that you might find in the grocery store in an envelope, it cuts the dust out of your mouth with the tangy part and it will slake your thirst. Okay, let's move on to the pound cake. So here you can see on that side there's kind of a flat area right here. That's where the oxygen absorbing pad was. On the other side, look pretty good. I'll break off a piece. Again, this is pineapple pound cake. Nice and yellow on the inside, or yellowish orange, kind of like everything pumpkin spiced these days. It kind of looks like something pumpkin spiced. Here's to you. We're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. Pretty dry. Pineapple flavor is in there, and it does not take a lot to discern that. It's a little dry, as I said. You may want to have something to drink on hand. The texture of it is. Once you start working on it in your mouth, it's kind of uh, doughy. It kind of gets to a doughy texture. It's not dry like a cracker. It's dry like this bread, like the like the wheat snack bread. But it's very good, and the pineapple flavor may or may not be artificial. I don't know. I haven't come across any chunks of pineapple in there, but it's definitely there. It's definitely pineapple, and I think there's nothing wrong with this uh, pound cake today. So I'm probably going to go ahead and eat this next piece. Cheers. Okay, so I'm going to fold up the case knife and put it away. Um, it has a bone handle, bone handle scales, and pins. There are two round-headed ones and then two recessed, so it's got four pins that hold it together. And it's made by Case & Sons. Again, this is not sponsored by them, and 
video is not sponsored by the NRA, not sponsored by anybody but me. We need to try one of these fig bars. I'm going to smell it first. It smells like figs on both ends and in the middle. So both ends in the middle smell like figs. That's pretty good. It'll be a close-up shot of that. It's got quite a bit of fig filling in it. And the cake is not too thick around it. Kind of porous on that side and not so much on this side. So I'm going to take a bite off of that and we'll let you know what happens. Whoa! Didn't expect that. Inside of that is crunchy. Which means it's dry. But the crunchy part has a sweet taste to it, so it may be that the sugar that's inside the fig paste kind of dried out and crystallized. Tastes okay though. I'll give that a hmm, A minus to a B simply because of the texture, but for um, 14 years old that's good and I would not throw that in the fire in a hunting camp and I wouldn't discard it around the trail either. That's good stuff. So let's have uh, another bite of our cheese buddy on bread. Mmm. I like that. But it is dry. Here's to you. Definitely helps to have something wet standing by. You don't need a lot of it, but some. Okay, we're going to feel the ooh, wow, ow. We're going to ow. Hot. So the FRH is doing its duty in here. I've got <clears throat> the bottom side here is very hot. Top side not so much, and that's what you expect. Once again, when we put this in the FRH envelope, we put it with the thicker part of the retort pouch where essentially where the food was um, in contact with the heating element so that the heat would go up into the food. So it's making its way through there because the top of the box here is pretty warm. The back side Kind of, kind of keep a light touch on that. It's pretty hot. So I'm not quite ready to take that out yet. We're going to let that go and cook some more. And maybe have another bite of snack bread. And put some more cheese spread on there because it is pretty good. So far, nothing that I've opened has given me any clue in any way that it wasn't good. There's no rancidity detectable in the cheese spread, either by taste or smell. The pound cake had an oxygen absorber in it, and it was just as good as it could be, especially for 14 years. The fig bars are somewhat dry, and they have crystallized inside, but they're still good, as far as I can tell. The orange drink, very good. And we have another bite of snack bread with cheese. Hmm. Okay. So there's two varieties of the cheese spreads that I like officially now. And one is the jalapeno cheese, which I like, and I know certain factions over in the UK say, hell no, and that's fine. Everybody has their own taste. But I like the jalapeno cheese spread. And this is actually just as good in my book as the, as the jalapeno cheese spread is. This pound cake, very good. Fig bars, once again, quite edible. Not like a Fig Newton or something similar that you would get right out of the package from the store today, but definitely they're so good that they easily belie their age of 14 years in the package. A little sip of uh, orange drink. Okay, we're going to shut this down for now. Get back to you pretty soon when the FRH is done doing its business. So stand by.
Well, we continue to wait for the FRH to cook our main meal pouch. I wanted to offer special thanks to Art and Nina at 4nmre.com. That's foreign like a foreign country, 4nmre.com for the French MRE that they sent me for winning their August 26th giveaway. I sent this nice certificate along with it. It says, congratulations, you won. Thank you for participation in our YouTube video contest. Your prize is enclosed, and we invite you to share a picture of your winning prize on our Facebook and Instagram pages. We appreciate your support. Sincerely, Art and Nina. ForeignMRE.com. There's their logo. Well, Art and Nina, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do that because right away after the package came and I opened it, we went camping for a couple of days. And guess what we took with us? So, here's what's left of it. And everything else was de freaking licious. So, I have some yellow tea left. Yellow label tea, it's actually black tea by Lipton's, that came in it. Some instant cream de legumes soup. Some green tea. Also by Lipton. Salt and pepper packets. And there's a nice generous supply of napkins or this could also be toilet tissue. There looks to be about 10 layers of it in there. And it's going to just stay wrapped and go in one of my bags for camping or hunting. So, once again, Art and Nina at foreignmre.com. Please go and check out their YouTube channel. They do reviews on foreign MREs. They have contests there and they also have an online store where you can actually buy MREs from other countries. They also occasionally have some other things um, that are not necessarily edible, but are really great to have. So give them a look at their channel, foreignmre.com, all one word. And uh, order stuff. Okay, let's see if the main menu pouch, the breaded chicken breast patty with pasta shells and tomato sauce, is warm enough to eat. Ooh, wow, wow. The back side, ow, with the back side where the heating elements are is smoking hot. Dangerous to touch for more than a second, I'd say. As long as it's got that much heat left in it, put it back in the box and let it do some more cooking. And for entertainment, while we're waiting, I'm going to call upon... Mr. Case and Son, one more time. Usually I don't open these, but I can reseal them with a heat resealer. So, let's take a look. Now this is verified liquid Tabasco sauce. And this got torn somehow in shipping. But there's the Lighthouse Teepee. So you have Teepee, all you need is something to use it on. And everybody's got that well covered. Here's a moist towelette. Salt, iodized. Pretty good thing to have out on the trail, especially if you're out hiking and you sweat a lot. Um, salt's a good thing to have along replenish some of your electrolytes, sodium and chloride in particular. Here's some non-dairy creamer. I'm shaking it and I can feel it moving back and forth in there so I know it's still powdery. That comes to us from uh, 254th day of 2004. One of the small items that's actually dated. Here's uh, Taster's Choice Coffee. This is generally freeze-dried. Can you hear it? So it's still in pretty good condition. Hasn't been wet. Domino sugar. Still granular. 
good old MRE chewing gum. Coatings are very shiny. They're probably hard. It'll take a little bit to chew into them. And we have our matches, the standard damp resistant matches. These are white tip. We usually either get white or red. We'll take one off and demo demonstrate it. And there we have fire. And that's essential for survival. So we've got fire covered. So for now, I'm going to put it, put all these things back in their little packet, and I will distribute them into my survival kits or bug out bags, as the case may be, some other time. I'm a believer in letting things cook as long as possible, as long as you have the heat, as long as you have the time, you're not pressed, you don't have to move out, you're in camp, you're parked up against the trunk of a tree in the middle of the day while you're out hunting, you have time to let these things heat up, and I have time right now, I'm not going to make you share the whole uh, 15 or 20 minutes that's going to go by till that meal is heated. I will um, edit that out so you don't have to wait. But let's have some more of this. Wheat snack bread and cheese with bacon. Because that is the bomb, I'll tell you. That's really good. This definitely is going to score high on my final grade for today. Yum, yum. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Just the tiniest little sip of that orange drink. Take care of any dryness that comes from the snack bread and cheese. Yes, that's good. Some more pound cake if you don't mind. Pineapple pound cake. Mm, 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 good. That's moist enough to actually get down without a drink. And another bite of Fig Newton. The cake outer coating of the Fig Newton is very moist, just like it would be with a new one. In the middle here, as opposed to the end, the only crunchy things I'm running into are the fig seeds instead of crystallized sugar. So, in the middle of this big bar, it tastes pretty darn good. I would stack that up against a shelf fresh Fig Newton, I really would. It does not taste off pudding, rancid, stale, or bad in any way. It's just misshapen a little bit because it's been packed for so long. But I don't find anything on the surface of this, on the inside of this, or in the taste that makes me go, uh oh, I shouldn't eat that. And I have found those things before, indications that I shouldn't eat it, and I generally follow my intuition on that. Let's give the main entree another field test here. Get it out of the bag. Heating elements are still extremely hot. And so, guess what? You're right. I'm gonna let it continue to do its thing because as far as I'm concerned, can't be too much cooking. Get back to you in a few minutes. The time has come to make a decision, and so we will. This is still really, really hot back here where the elements are. The front of it is actually hot too. So let's take this out. I'm going to wipe off the moisture off the packet. 
that's really really hot. I don't think I need to necessarily put it into any boiling water. And mush it around a little bit. Ah! You can tell there's sauce in there. It always gets hot better than the rest of the other ingredients. So again, sniff test tells me there's no leakage of any um, aromatic elements out of there, tomato paste or anything else that smells like what's supposed to be in here. So I'm squishing down the contents towards the bottom of the envelope. And Mr. Case and his sons go to work on the outside. And what do we have? Oh my, my, my. Okay. Get a look at that. That looks pretty red. Looks pretty tomatoey. Looks pretty fresh. Didn't have an escape of gas or anything when I opened it. We'll squeeze it out onto the tray. There's the chicken patty. And there's the noodles and sauce. See what I can get out of there without digging in there with a spoon. So, let's take a look here at what we have. There's lots of cheese in there, probably parmesan. And there's breaded chicken patty, shell macaroni, tomato sauce, there's spices evident in there. Let's try a smell test. It smells okay. So here we go. Tomatoes, oregano, cheese, of course macaroni, uh, maybe some garlic. Prominent flavors in there, probably some salt. Let's dig in there and see if we can get a piece of that chicken patty and what the texture is like. So I'm able to cut it with the MRE spoon, which suggests to me that it's formed and flaked rather than an actual chicken breast or something like that. Uh, let's see if I can get in such a way that you can see the texture. Okay, in there. Probably too close. There you go. That looks pretty good. It looks flaky, but it looks pretty good. So let's try it with uh, some of the sauce. Mmm. So that has some breading on it. It's also got quite a bit of cheese. And the texture of the meat is such that you could almost say that it was actually uh, chicken breast. It may well be. I'm thinking it's formed and flaked. But I've actually had cooked chicken breast that was not formed and flaked, but they had that kind of texture. The breading is kind of gooey, and that may be kind of from the cheese that's on it and the sauce and the fact that it's very old doesn't taste old, it tastes pretty good. Um, could you get something better than this in an Italian restaurant? Yes, you could. Could you make it at home better than this? Yes. Could you get something better than this um, in a non-dehydrated form to go out in the woods or camping or hunting with? Um, I don't think so, to tell you the truth. Mm. Good. Goes down good.
There are some small fragments of tomatoes in there. And there's one. Probably can't tell that's a tomato, but it is. Yep. And I can see others. So that's good. All right. Nice. Have my last piece of wheat snack bread. And see if I got any more cheese in there. I used a lot of it. Mm -mm. Oh man. This has been one of the better MREs that I've opened. Out of 24 minus one that I sent to Polly. So out of 23, this is certainly tied for first, whatever first was before. This is good. Good. Yum. Mm. Pineapple fiber sticking up in that last bite. See them? Look like little stringy things there. Right there. Good stuff. Okay, I'm going to finish this up off camera, and when we get back, we will have a mail call and also an announcement for an upcoming milestone on this channel, so you might want to stick around. All right, so that was good. We're cleaned up here and ready to go on with mail call, but before I do, I wanted to do a little recap of the MRE menu number 23 from 2004, the chicken with cavatelli. Give that an A. Fig bar, A minus. Pound cake gets an A. Cheese spread with bacon gets an A. Wheat snack bread gets a B plus. The beverage base powder was a solid A. Hot sauce we didn't try. Showed you what was in the accessory packet. And the FRH did its job. It did not need to use the boiling water. Alright, time has come for the mail call. So here we have a box that came in the mail the other day. <clears throat> Must be from Italy because it says Fragile. All over it. And so the mystery box comes from Julie, owner and operator and artist in residence at the surviving Julie Silversmith YouTube channel. Julie's channel tackles a wide variety of prepping and SHTF topics from homesteading and small acreage farming to catching, storing, and purifying water, backyard chickens and rabbits, bartering, pottery, beekeeping, gardening, canning, preserving food, custom silver jewelry creation, furniture refinishing, camping out, glamping in, and how to handle critters that get into your hen house and much much more. So check out Surviving Julie Silversmith on YouTube today. Uh, link at the bottom of the page. You'll also see links to her Instagram account, her online store, and her other YouTube channel called Paintsmith where she does portraiture and still life painting. So let's see what's in this. Here's a card right on top. Pretty nice picture on there. And I will read this. All right. Julie and her husband live on a one acre, I believe it's one acre, homestead, um, ranchette, farmette in Texas, and they grow all kinds of things. Super delicious golden honeydew. So that's what these seeds are. And this is Bouli Roma, very drought heat tolerant. Tomatoes. 
And if you look, take a look at her channel, you'll see all the tomatoes that she's gotten this year. Probably fill a wheelbarrow full of them. And what else do we have? Uh oh. There's some pottery in here, which is her forte. She's a very accomplished potter. Look at that. That's a mug and the camera doesn't do it justice. Right, something else. Looks like another one. So we have one for me and one for my wife. And that is just outstanding. Very nice. You can watch her make these kinds of things on her YouTube channel. And she has dozens and dozens of videos already up on there. And makes a new one once or twice a week. Thank you very much, Julie. We'll put these to good use, no doubt. Now, another announcement. We're coming up pretty soon on 400 subscribers, and we're going to have another giveaway when we reach that mark. I haven't decided yet exactly what the prize will be. One of the things I have in mind is this camp knife, which I have never used. It's called a Rough Rider. That's the brand. It has brass bolsters and pins and uh, cut red bone handle scales and some tools. So here we have a drop point main blade. This is a can opener. It's very tight and hard to get these out of here because, as I say, I've never used them. But there's a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver blade in there. There it is. Which also has a bottle opener. And then, this would be an awl, AWL. And you could sew leather and other things with that. So this is a camp knife. Brand new, never used. And I'm thinking that this is probably going to be the prize. Again, it has brass bolsters. It has a nameplate here that says Rough Rider. And there's four really handy tools on there. And it has a clip where you can attach that to a carabiner. You could lash it to uh, your pack or your... Um, make a lanyard and hook it to your belt loop with paracord however you decide to keep it around it's a very useful knife and I'm thinking that that's going to be the prize for 400 viewers maybe more I don't know but for now that'll be it alright that's been an MRE review and a mail call video by Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things we thank you for watching and we invite you to tune in next time for another MRE review or possibly something completely unexpected. Until then, stay safe and adios.